come away with me in the night. Come away with me in the night. Oh, and I, I will write you a song. Won't you try? Come away with me tonight. Come away with me on a mountain top. Come away with me and we will kiss on a mountain top. Oh, where well they, they can't tempt us with their lies. Cause I want to walk with you on a cloudy day. Oh, in fields where the yellow grass grows knee high. So I want you to try. Come away in the night. Come away with me all tonight. Oh, and I, I will write you a song. Cause I want to wake up with the rain falling on a tin roof Oh, while I'm safe there all in your arms So won't you try, try, try Come away with me uh, tonight Come away on a mountain top, valley low. Come with me, baby, baby, oh, wherever I, I go. Won't you come away with me? Well, all right, I'm not mad at you. <laughs> you are here. <laughs> Somebody wrote a song about knowing when to hold them and knowing when to fold them. This is my version of that. Understanding you, I'm about to understand my life away. Oh, it's been a long time coming, y'all, but I'm taking care of me today. Ain't got no money, ain't got no house, ain't got no fancy limousine, no. But I've got me and I know God, that's all that I need. Oh, I'm changing, I'm rearranging my life. Well, I'm trying to find my way to a place that I've never been before. I'm looking for love, peace and happiness in my soul. Well, I spent a lot of time on the run. 
Oh, but today I like who I've become. I said I'm changing, I'm rearranging my life. Ooh, there's so much feeling right between us, but still there's something wrong. You see, it's you and me and them and all the baggage we bring along. It's not the lack of love that's got me pulling away, no, no. And you know it ain't been easy, cause a part of me really wants to stay. Oh, but I'm changing, and I'm rearranging my life. Well, I'm trying to find my way to a place I've never been before. I'm looking for love, peace and happiness in my soul. I've spent a lot of time on the run. I said today I like who I've become. But I'm changing, I'm rearranging my life. Ooh, and understanding you, I'm about to understand my life away. Oh, it's been a long time coming, y'all, but I'm taking care of me today. I won't be afraid of what tomorrow brings, no, no. I've got God on my side, and I know I can face anything. Change, 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 change. Change, change, change. I'm talking about a change. I say it's time to shake it up now. Cause we're moving on up, oh, moving on out. I'm talking about a change. Change, change. Change, change. Said I know a place, y'all. Ain't nobody crying. Ain't nobody worrying. Oh, ain't no smiling faces out there. Line to the races, no. Said I know a place, y'all. I said it ain't nobody crying. Ain't nobody worrying. Oh. Ain't no smiling faces Line, line to the racing, no Oh, and I'll take you there Come on and let me, let me take you there Come on and take me by my hand, y'all Oh, and I'll take you there Come on and take me by my hand won't you let me, let me take you there? Cause I know a place in your home. Said I know a place in your home. Ain't nobody crying. Ain't nobody worrying. Oh, ain't no smiling faces. Line, line to the racing. No. Oh. I'll take you there. Come on, let me, let me take you there. Change, 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 change. Thank you, thank you. My captive audience, thank you very much. By the way, I'm Faye Ray. <laughs> oh, if I, oh, if I should stay. You know I would only 
be in your way yeah. so I'll go oh but I, I know that I will think of you every step of the way oh and I always love you Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, may we have your attention, please. On behalf of the History Makers and tonight's sponsors, we want to welcome you to an evening with Richard Parsons. We are videotaping tonight's event at the Jack Morton Auditorium for television and ask that everyone be seated and remain so for the duration of tonight's program. As a member of our audience, you consent to being videotaped and shown as a part of our PBS television program. Also, if you are asked by one of our ushers to sit in a particular location, please oblige us by doing so. You must stay seated during the duration of the program. There can be no chewing of gum. Also, please turn off all, and we mean all, cell phones and pagers. This includes cell phone vibrators. Non-authorized video cameras, flash cameras, or other recording equipment are not allowed to be used during this TV taping, and we have a right to remove and safeguard them during the taping. Now please join us in welcoming our MC for the evening, one of America's leading journalists, Fox News contributor, and national public radio correspondent, Mr. Juan Williams. <music> Good evening. It's a true pleasure to be here with all of you this evening. 
Let's just say that when the history makers call, I listen. My relationship with this organization goes back several years. I've had the distinct pleasure of interviewing writer, author, and poet Sonia Sanchez. And then right here in this auditorium, I interviewed the husband of Alma Powell, <laughs> our friend General Colin Powell, who's here tonight. The History Makers has planned a very special program for all of you. Our guest of honor is Dick Parsons, business icon and chairman of the board of Time Warner, America's leading media company. Mr. Parsons will be interviewed by CNN's Soledad O'Brien. All History Makers, including tonight's special guest, walk in a tradition of African American success. Pioneers, trailblazers, dreamers, believers, the courageous, and the cheerful. These people are planners and achievers with their feet on the ground and minds full of vision of how to beat any odds through hard work and determination. This is the inspiring story of black history makers from Benjamin Banneker to Sojourner Truth to President-elect Barack Obama. Now, let me say that tonight's honored guest Dick Parsons knows hard work. He knows what it means to stay awake nights, figuring out success. At his age, we're just trying to get him to stay awake days now. <laughs> In all seriousness, tonight's program is really the brainchild of our event chair, the one and only Mr. Vernon Jordan. We're also here thanks to the tireless efforts of a hardworking committee led by event co-chairs Tony and Dwight Bush, Bill and Carol Lewis. Please acknowledge these wonderful people. And on behalf of the History Makers, we also wish to thank the Benefit Committee, volunteers, all these interns that you've seen helping tonight, the staff who worked so tirelessly on tonight's program. But most of all, from the depths of my heart, I want to say for the History Makers, we want to thank you for your support and for coming here tonight. Thank you very much.
Uh, good evening, my name is Russ Ramsey, and as Chairman of the Board of Trustees, it is my honor to welcome you back to the George Washington University's Jack Morton Auditorium. We are pleased again this year to be one of the sponsors of this event. GW is proud of its association with the history makers, and it is indeed an honor to celebrate one of our great Americans and a dear friend, Dick Parsons. I also have some great news to share with you. Last year at this time, Juliana Richardson asked our president, Stephen Knapp, to further the relationship between the George Washington University and the history makers. And I am very proud to announce that starting next semester, Meredith Evans Rayford, our head of special collections, will provide training to all students here at GW for the use of the History Makers Test Digital Archive. I hope that you are as pleased as we are. Now it is my pleasure to introduce another of Washington, D.C.'s great people, one of our top lawyers, as well as the title sponsor of tonight's event. She also serves as chair of the Board of the History Makers, Ms. Tony Cook Bush. <laughs> Well, of course, I want to thank uh, Russ and George Washington University. Our relationship over the years has grown um, into a wonderful partnership, and we're very excited about it. I'm also pleased to announce that we've raised $400,000 tonight, which was our goal. <laughs> and I want to thank all of you here tonight for your support. Um, your support is very important to us, and we really appreciate it. Uh, we have created a collection um, that is unparalleled. In fact, the President-elect Obama is, was interviewed by the History Makers in 2001, before he was the President-elect, um, and he and the First Lady-elect, I think that might be the right term, uh, were early supporters of the History Makers. Our collection has over 8,000 hours of African-American testimony. It's the largest collection of its kind in the world. Uh, we have a total of 1,900 interviews, and they average three to four hours in length, although there is one that's 17 hours, and maybe later I'll tell you whose it was. <laughs> um, we are looking to continue, and all of you tonight have helped us um, on our journey. Um, with your support, the History Makers has, been ra um, has raised over $10 million since its inception, and every penny has been reinvested back into the organization. We do interviews constantly, no matter what's going on. Um, and we use that money also to improve our processes and to work towards relationships like the one we've developed with George Washington. Um, I want to thank you again for being here tonight, and now it's my pleasure to introduce the History Makers founder and executive director and creative visionary and my good friend, Juliana Richardson. Tony was in the back telling me to take a few deep breaths. <laughs> Um, it's really a pleasure. She's been a constant supporter, a voice of reason, and a true friend. Um, together we have really worked um, with a dedicated group of supporters uh, to build this collection. I want to thank you, Vernon Jordan, for making this, this program possible tonight. I want to acknowledge you, uh, General Powell, um, um, because we interviewed you in 2006. Um, I want to thank you for your life and career and your integrity. Um, you make us all proud. <clears throat> the Powell family are really a wonderful family. We interviewed not only Colin Powell, but his son and Alma Powell uh, back in 2006. Uh, there are uh, several of our um, history makers here in the audience. I was hoping you would stand so we can acknowledge you. We, we appreciate, can you please stand, those of you who are here? Oh, my goodness, what a shy group. <laughs> the 
recording these stories take, you know, the, the recorder and the person sitting down. Often we're chasing people all around the country, so we appreciate when people take the time to sit down and talk with us. I might like to, you know, my vision from the beginning was that we would take traditional oral histories and combine it with state-of-the-art technology. We could not have done it um, had I not um, met or been introduced to a Professor Howard Wackler, who's here from Carnegie Mellon. Pro Professor Wackler, will you please stand? Um, it's his, he's... <laughs> I'd like to call him our, our, our godfather and our genius. Um, but his technology, we've um, digitized and indexed 1,200 hours of video. Um, it's the largest searchable database of its kind. It's now um, being tested, um, as Russ Ramsey said, um, that George Washington University, who's made a wonderful partner with us, has stepped forward and followed the challenge. But they've joined um, Carnegie Mellon University, Buffalo SUNY, the University of Illinois um, um, and, uh, but, I'm sorry, Syracuse, um, to use this collection in the classroom so there are people that are actually using it as we speak. Um, this is our vision. Our vision is really to change the dialogue of African American achievement in this country. This summer, we had 16 interns at the History Makers. They held from Harvard University, Amherst, Brown, New York University, DePaul, the University of Illinois, and the University of Chicago. I want to share with you their experiences, their presence in our office this summer, their excitement about the collection often brought tears to my eyes. Let's take a look. People don't understand that if we don't have an accurate reflection and testimonials and narratives of different experiences that happened in all facets of society, particularly an often neglected part like the African American community, then we don't have an accurate understanding of the present. I see a value for oral history now in those sort of more individual stories and in the people that don't necessarily write a book all the time or you know may not be in the news. And then you start talking to them and you start learning things about them and they've seen all these things and met all these people and they have such a wealth of knowledge that wouldn't be getting preserved any other way. This project is invaluable. What they're doing, you know, what we're doing, interviewing these unsung heroes, these people that have had an impact on the African American community and making this American history, you know, we go into this, we have our education institute, you know, where we're going into these schools um, and, you know, immersing young children in this African American history, history, introducing them to history makers, pairing them up with a mentor um, so they can see that there are people, especially African Americans, male and female, that are doing the right things that have succeeded. The insight that our interviewers are able to bring out in these historically important lives will be a testament and, and an asset to future scholars and, and to generations in the future. I really like the interactive nature of this of this archive, so it's not, you know, in a dusty, musty space that nobody can see. We're taking it out into the community. We have evening whiffs, we have PBS specials, we have a curriculum that was um, functional in three different school systems, and I think that's huge because history is only powerful if it's in the hands of the people. And so by providing this information to a larger masses, we're actually empowering them at the same time. Just the other week, I. I um, called James McQuay, who is a furrier in New York, and um, you know I talked to him on the phone because there wasn't a lot of information on the internet, and I knew that if I just got had him fill out the questionnaire, there still wouldn't be enough information there for the interview to interviewer to conduct a good interview. We ended up talking for an hour about his life, and towards the end he. He said that he was so happy that we could talk and how, how much he appreciated that I took the time to call him and sit, you know, talk, ask him all these questions and how you know, a lot of the things that we talked about were things that he hadn't thought about in years. And um, you know, one of the things that 
Julian talks about with the history makers is that the, the purpose of the project is to reawaken memories. It gives African Americans the chance to become not, you know, this monolithic thing, but more of like a mosaic of different people and experiences and things to show that, you know, we're not one thing or another thing. You know, there's a vast, vast range of experience of experiences in African American history and things that are being created now. And I think that we have a real opportunity here to, to capture that and to make and to keep it current while also documenting the past. The magnitude of this collection is really, really hard to describe, but you know, that it's really important that people get excited about it and just really try to um, use the resources that we have here. I don't know if you can put, <laughs> a va could put value on it. It's invaluable. It's just, it's amazing. And especially, I look at um, going to public school for high school here in Chicago, and we spend forever learning about the Holocaust but maybe a week in February learning about black history. And I think that it's just really important to have that at our fingertips and have access to it, especially in the schools. Because I have a hard time to define, you know, what is the history makers. Because uh, I think I, I, I told to somebody once, but I think in some ways everybody can be history makers. I'm an Afri I'm a history major at Brown, um, also, very interested in African American studies, Africana studies, so I'll do a double major. Um, so I'm always thinking about ways to innovate the program, the project, because I absolutely love it and I think it has all the potential in the world. Good evening. My name is Alicia Mall and I'm a sophomore at Brown University, class of 2011. We are all strong believers in the history makers. Standing with me, Brittany Mosley, a junior in economics major at Harvard University, and Kimberly Collins, a graduate student at DePaul University. Brittany produced an evening with Eartha Kitt and did an amazing job. Kimberly, who spearheaded, the, who spearheaded working on the evening with Richard Parsons, chose to do her public interest internship with the history makers for the next 10 months. Thanks to public allies where First Lady Michelle Obama was the first executive director, we feel extremely honored to stand before you tonight representing the History Makers, the largest African American archival project of its kind in the world, especially at this defining moment in our history. There is no denying that this organization has a special place in my heart and a pivotal, unwavering place within African American discourse. The passing of my father, Albert Mall, a Harvard-trained lawyer, left me at a young age without clear access to my African-American roots. My mother, Adela Cepeda, who is here in the audience tonight, is from Colombia and has been an amazing force in my life, but unable to give me the foundation um, to be a black American the way my father could. It has been through my long hours of research with the history makers that I have been able to make those roots tangible becoming intimately acquainted with the lives and groundbreaking works of thousands of African Americans, such as Ann Nixon Cooper. Particularly moving has been the privilege to listen to the individual stories within our archive, their voices resonating with the historical path of our people. My experience with the history makers has been an extraordinarily educational, teaching me a history that has been silenced by the media and kept out of the books. It has deepened my love for being a black woman in America and reinforced the importance of the monumental moment our country witnessed just 11 days ago, the election of the first African-American president. The naming of Barack Obama as the president-elect on the eve of Tuesday, November 4th, signaled a turning point in American history. A country with a legacy of slavery and systematized racism has entered a new era of change and hope. The History Makers affords us the opportunity to write our own history so it is never forgotten. Therefore, on Inauguration Day, when President Obama walks into the White House, the historical significance will always be remembered. And that's why the History Makers exists, to ensure that we as a people never forget our history. Thank you, and a very special thank you to Juliana Richardson.
Those kids really delivered for me, I'm telling you. Um, one thing I forgot to tell you, uh, because one person here in the audience um, is Dr. Frances Carroll. She's on the Board of Trustees for the University of Illinois. Um, because of her vision, the president of the university uh, last year committed a million dollars um, to support our initiative. So we are being taught in the classroom that. You see, the interest and dedication to our collection now gives me immense hope, um, even in, though times have been difficult. We know that the collection will educate American children and the children of the world. We also know that its tentacles, or our tentacles, and time will extend to every school, college, and university in the world. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce tonight's host, Ms. Soledad O'Brien. She is literally known to millions around the world. Born in New York of parents of mixed heritage, the fifth of six children, she has often been the voice and is the voice of black America. And her name means the Blessed Virgin Mary of Solitude. And when I see her, she makes me smile. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm welcome to the one and only Ms. Soledad O'Brien. <laughs> I am happy and honored to be here to celebrate the life and career of one of the most significant corporate leaders of our time. He rose from corporate lawyer to bank president, and then he was picked to head the world's largest media and entertainment company. He is known for his quick wit and his razor-sharp humor. His career is legendary, too. His name is Richard Parsons.